Uh, we're really lucky to have the folks from the National Council on Teacher Quality with us. And that organization, if you're not familiar with it, is devoted to achieving an effective and diverse teacher workforce so that all students have access to effective teachers. So we titled this discussion, You Can't Pursue Equity in the Dark. And we are focused today on leveraging teacher workforce data systems in order to improve equity in schools. So think about that theme throughout the presentation of the importance of pursuing equity and doing so by using teacher workforce data. We know as families and parents and people who know children that teachers matter, but we also know it from the research that teachers are the most important in-school factor when it comes to student learning, growth, and achievement. And in this slide here, the teacher, that students who are assigned to effective teachers are more likely to have better outcomes along a number of different dimensions, as you see there. We know, of course, that students in our nation have been damaged by the COVID-19 pandemic, and that the damage that was wrought has been wrought disproportionately on students who were already disadvantaged by our system students of color, students living in poverty, multilingual students, and students with disabilities. So teachers have always been important, we've known that, and yet now more than ever, it's important that students have access to an effective and diverse teacher workforce. Our mission at the National Council on Teacher Quality, as Chris said, is to ensure that every child has an effective teacher and that every teacher has the opportunity to become effective. So we're on this mission together with you to pursue a diverse and effective teacher workforce. So if our collective goal is this diverse and effective teacher workforce today and in our work tomorrow and the weeks to come, how do we use data to meet this mission? Where are we now and what can we do? So let's consider the objectives in the, of our session today. We have four things that we're setting out to do. First, Understand the national landscape as it relates to teacher supply and demand and why this matters. Second, as state teams or state individuals, identify questions that are a priority in your state to best understand your current teacher supply and demand needs, how they relate to equity, and think about the data and the data connections that you need to answer the questions that are driving you towards equity. You'll learn a little bit about states leading the way and we'll have a chance to discuss next steps for action. I wanna talk a little bit about the role of data in promoting equity. Why do we need teacher supply and demand data? Overall, it helps us diagnose a problem. It helps us answer questions like the ones you see currently in, in, in your screen, like what are the subject areas that have the largest number of vacancies? Or teachers out of field, are they more prevalent in some districts or schools than others? Are we getting enough teachers prepared to meet specific demand in certain subjects or geographical areas? What's the student-teacher racial gap? Or who's leaving? Are some types of teachers leaving more than others? All those are questions that can be answered if you have the right type of teacher supply and demand data. All those are workforce-related questions. We're, we're talking about very economic concepts, supply and demand. So what does all this have to do with equity? What would happen if we ask the same questions differently? For example, what in, if instead of saying what subject areas present the largest number of initial vacancies, we would say, is it harder to find math teachers in schools that serve higher percentages of, of economically disadvantaged students or students of color? What if instead of saying, what is the student-teacher racial gap, we would say, are districts attracting and hiring diverse teacher talent to the benefit of all students? So I wanted to superimpose these questions, ask in a different way so that you would know how each of those questions that sounded very much like a data thing, a number thing, like an economic concept, but how they actually relate to equity. So once you put it like that, the connection between data and equity, I hope, becomes clear. And the importance of having this data to inform equity decisions also becomes clear. So what we know about the teacher workforce is, first, we know that we're lacking a national picture on teacher staffing challenges. So much as our newspapers and press would like to convince us that there is some sort of national picture, 
we're actually lacking data to tell us what the national picture is. There's no national up-to-date data on the teacher workforce that could tell us, for example, to what extent there is a shortage and where, in which schools and subjects, and therefore which student populations are most impacted. We know these teacher shortages are not universal, and we know that schools with the highest numbers of students living in poverty and schools with higher percentages of students of color experience the worst shortages. So when we looked at this work, and Patricia will tell you a little bit more about what we learned by working with states across the nation, we saw a lack of data connections. That is, there's no linkage between teacher preparation in the pipeline and teacher where teachers go to teach, for example. We saw a lack of disaggregation, and Patricia will tell you a little bit more about that, why that's confounding, and a lack of timeliness of data. And these problems with the data or these concerns prevent states from acting appropriately or from acting in ways that can target the problem at hand and correctly identify it and then provide um, a really good diagnosis and a really good solution. For example, um, we have a colleague in Indiana, Rebecca Estes at the Indiana Department of Ed, who said, I don't know what to do about teacher shortages generally, but I can deal with needing seven math teachers in XYZ district in Indiana. So really, this, these systems that lack uh, easily accessible, timely, relevant, disaggregated data mean that in the public discourse, we're influenced by news headlines rather than by actual data. And this could have a very real effect of implementing policy that's not well informed and that in the end isn't particularly good for kids or for teachers or for administrators. 